Well, this morning, this is week two of a four-week installment on paid in full, paid in full. And today is, is from debt to freedom, from debt to freedom. Our major verses is going to be found in Luke 23, 33 to 43. Luke 23, 33 to 43. The weight of sin and death is none of us to carry on our own. That's why Jesus had to die on our behalf. Though his uh, sacrificial death and victorious resurrection, Jesus offers forgiveness of sin, reconciliation with God, and a gift of eternal life to all who believe in him. As the Gospel of John says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You shall be free indeed. John 8, 36. Father, thank you for giving your life so that we could have life. Thank you for taking our sin and death so that we could have live in eternal freedom. Amen. 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 Welcome back, church. Glad to have you all here as we continue again in this series of Paid in Full. Last week we celebrated Easter Sunday with the victory, faith, and hope that comes along with the resurrection of Christ. And today, as we move on to Easter freedom, it's only right that we talk about the greater implications of Jesus' death and victory over sin. One of the most amazing ongoing realities of resurrection is called the atonement, which is a fancy church way of saying that Jesus satisfied the debt of sin. He paid the price for our sins, took death upon himself, and was resurrected. He freed us from the obligation of sin from the debt. Now that we say that Jesus takes people from debt to freedom, we are acknowledging the profound reality of redemption and salvation found in him. Though his sacrificial death and victorious resurrection, Jesus offers forgiveness of sins and reconciliation with God and the gift of eternal life to all who believe in him. A lot of people, when you ask them, do you know Jesus? Well, yes, I've heard about him. Oh, uh, I remember that from when I was a child. My mother made me go to Sunday school. I learned, you know, about Jesus. That's not what the question. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Not a religion, but a relationship with Jesus. Yes. That's the important part. And you know, it's not that you can go and, and say, you know, well, let me give you an example. You ever watch these beauty contests and, and they say, what is your hope? You know, what would you like to accomplish? I, I want freedom for the whole world. Well, that's nice. But where do you start? Each person, each Amen. individual. Like when I say to you up here on Sunday mornings, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Or do you just know about him? Have you heard his name? Or do you know who he is? That's the important part. But I'm asking individuals. I'm not asking all of Fountain. I'm not asking all of Bay County. I'm asking you. What is your answer? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to introduce you to him today. 
I want to make sure that you don't leave here without making that decision today. Pastor, why today? Because today might be the only day you have. Amen. Amen. I know a lot of preachers, they're going to say, well, you might walk out the, the door there and a meteor will hit you in the head. You know? Or you might trip and fall and break your neck. I'm just going to tell you something. The very next breath that you take is not guaranteed. Amen. I know. The older I get, the more I realize that. The older I get, the more I want to try and make sure you understand. Because it's that important. It's an eternal decision that you're going to make. It's not one just for, well, what are we going to have for lunch today? You know, well, I'd like to go to Arby's. Or I'd like to go to Hardee's. Uh, I didn't mean Arby's. I meant Hardee's. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the Gypsy Cafe. <laughs> no. That's just temporal. I'm talking about eternal. Amen. Eternal. That's a long time. That's a long time. I always use an example about my little, my oldest granddaughter. She says, Papa, when she was little, Papa, I love you this much. To her, that was a bunch. That was all her little arms could reach. Now put that in perspective of eternity. I can't even hardly get my head around it. Amen. To think about eternity. And then, like I ask people, where do you want to spend that eternity? You're going to go, you're not, you know, you're going to spend eternity in one or two places. Smoking or not smoking. Right. It's your choice. There's folks out there on the internet, it's your choice. I'm talking to all you out there in your fuzzy pants. I know you're sitting there. You're drinking that coffee. It's all right. Right. Got your wallet pants on. Walmart pants on, not wallet. Walmart pants. Oh my, oh my. But in the words of John's gospel, like I said, so if the sun sets you free, what? You're free indeed. You're free indeed. You want to be free? You want to. Take it and get that load of debt off your mind because I'm going to read you something here now. It's very interesting about debt. A study from the Royal College of Psychiatrists around debt uh, and uh, mental health found that half of all adults with a debt problem also live with mental ill health. This ranged uh, from a consistent feeling, feeling of anxiety, low mood, uh, and also to diagnose mental health condition. That can make you feel anxious, especially if you don't have support. That can make you considerable a uh, burden, maybe worse dealing when, it's, when you're alone, when it's, it's alone. Today's debt. Oh, give me, let me, I got an example of that. I used to listen to WBZ out of Boston all the time. And I really enjoyed that. Larry Glick, he was a talk show host on WBZ Boston. And he had, he was doing a thing on, on credit card debt. And he had this college uh, guy on there, and he says, oh, sir, how much uh, debt do you have on your credit card? He says, $40,000. He says, my gosh, what are you going to do? He says. You mean I have to pay it back? <laughs> I thought, wait a minute, this is a joke. This has got to be a joke. No, he believed he didn't have to pay it back. It was a gift. $40,000 in debt. And you're talking about what, 20% interest? <laughs> you know, loan sharks can't even charge that much interest, I don't think, what they do with these credit cards. But. It can cause you to have a bad night's sleep. Can't sleep because 
You got all that debt on you? The weight on you? So losing out a good night's sleep can not only affect your mood and energy levels, it can also affect your ability to work or have good relationships with friends and family. All these things can further add to your debt problem. It can also have you, you know, uh, uh, heart problems and all kinds of problems. This stress can work on you. We don't realize it. Okay, now that's that. We're talking about financial debt there. That's bad enough. You know, I know people and, and uh, that are just overwhelmed with it. Younger people, younger people, they look at their moms and dads who've been married probably 30 years and have accumulated stuff over 30 years. And they said, the wife goes, honey, now that we're married, I want as much as my mom and dad have. I want that television in the living room. I want to drive that new car. You know, I want that new four bedroom, uh, three bath house. You know, and and you better get out there and go to work and get that for me. Well, and the husband said, well, honey, how can I do that? Charge it, charge it. We can pay it off. We're well, going to live for thirty years, forty years. We can pay it off. Instant. That's called what I call the microwave generation. They want it now. Want it now. Well, <coughs> next thing you know, the marriage is so stressed out because of debt problems that it can no longer, they can no longer function as a married couple because of that. <coughs> Folks, and now that's just financial. That's just temporal. Now think about when you can think about the eternal debt. The eternal debt that each and every one of us, including me, owe. Yes. Amen. Which debt's that, Pastor? I didn't use that credit card. I didn't charge something. I'm going to tell you right now. We all owe that sin debt. Amen. That debt that we cannot pay. That debt that we cannot work off. Because it says we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes. My goodness. Do you mean that I owe that sin debt? Amen. Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah you do. Except for this. If you've ever accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess what? That debt's been paid. Amen. Yes. Huh? Amen. You better believe it. Amen. Huh? Can, can I get another amen? amen? Can I get a real amen now? Get a, come, come on now. They're listening on the internet. Let's give them an amen. Amen. Woo! All right. That'll get your hair going. I'll tell you what. That'll get you excited. When you think about it, you know, it was for a while, I guess it's still a custom for some folks. Uh, uh, I just, matter of fact, it was your mom just put it on the, uh, Facebook, I think it was, I was reading, where she was thanking somebody that paid for the bill, I guess going through a, a drive through or something. Anyway, people would go up to the drive drive through after they ordered some things, and, and uh, they get up there to go to pay the, at the pay window, and they say, "Oh, it's the man in front of you paid for your bill." Yeah, isn't that amazing? Somebody paid it for you, and you know what? That's what Jesus did. Amen. Over two thousand years ago, He said, "Jim Sharkey, it's good to owe a debt that he cannot pay. I'm going to pay it for him. I'm going to take care of it now." I'm going to die on the cross and pay that sin debt. Because the Bible very clearly says, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Jesus had to shed his blood. Amen. We say, there's that pastor getting there, all they talk about is bloody religion. That's, hey, listen, thank God he shed his blood. Amen. Amen. Thank God. It used to be uh, the sheep and the goats and the bulls and all that every year, and they would sacrificed thousands of them. But that was, had to be done over, over, 
and over again. But when Jesus was on the cross, he just said this, it is finished. Amen. It is finished. Wow. I cannot see as somebody is clear thinking enough to understand what took place on that old hill called, we call Golgotha on that cross that day and do not accept it. I don't understand why. Do they have a great desire to spend eternity in hell? I, I, I can't, that's got to be stinking thinking. I just don't, I can't think of anything else. I told you about the guy that one time told me, he says, we have a pastor, he says, I'm going to go to hell. And I'll tell all my friends, and we're just going to party. He said, you won't believe how we're going to party down there. I said, you have no idea what you're talking about. Amen. No idea. Didn't understand. Well, I'm going to read here now, Luke 33 to 43. And uh, we're going to be talking about this. 33 starts, when they, they arrived at the place called the Skull, and they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. And the people were still watching, and even the leader kept scoffing. And he said, he saved others, let him save himself. And this is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came uh, uh, offering him sour wine and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And the inscription above him read this. This is the king of the Jews. Actually, it would have been better if it said, This is the king of the world. This is the king of the universe. They were almost right. Almost had it. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuked him, and said, Don't you even fear God, since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because of we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. <coughs> today you will be with me in paradise. I want to point out one thing very clearly right here now. He wasn't baptized. Amen. Huh? He didn't have to go to class. He didn't have to do all the things that people will say you've got to do. All he said was, Lord, remember me. Amen. Lord, remember me. <coughs> and you know what? Jesus wants that. He wants to know you. He wants you to accept him as Lord and Savior. Amen. He wants you to give him your heart, your mind your whole being. Allow him, like I tell young people when I talk to them, let him be the boss of your life. That's understandable. Even I can grasp that. Let him be the boss of your life. And you say, Pastor, how can that be? Well, let me put it this way. I'm an impetuous, I'm a, I, I do things on the spur of the moment, not always thinking sometimes. I know they probably think, oh, Pastor, you, 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 that's not you, Pastor. Yeah, it is me. I know. You hold me in very high regard. And I appreciate that. I get some smiles on that one, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when you think about the love that God had shown towards us, Amen. why we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Why we were yet sinners. Now, some places, you know, they say, listen, if you want to come into the church here, you got to get a new suit. You know, you got to wear a tie. You know, shirts, shirts and 
No service without shirts and ties. What does it say in the restaurant doors? No shirt, no shoes, no service. No shirt, no shoes, shoes no service. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. As long as you come through the doors. Don't come in here without that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Some for it, but Thank you're you. welcome. Thank you're welcome. Because there's an old adage preachers always had. We catch them, God cleans them. We catch them, God cleans them. Yes. And that's the way it is. Amen. You don't have to do anything outlandish. All you got to do is say, Lord, remember me. I need you, God. I don't care if you're young or old. Like my brother, he was in, in his, I think he was in his 80s when he accepted the Lord. He only lived, lived a year or so after that. So thank God he did make that decision before Amen. it was too late. Amen. He almost waited too late. But that's God. It's always there. Jesus is always there, reaching down to us. He has to do that because we can't go that high to reach him. But his hand is always there for us, saying, come up here. I want you to know me. I want you to let me love on you. Because he loves us more than we can ever understand. Yes. Well, let's look at here now. I've got to get, to, get uh, back to my sermon here now. The weight of debt. Number one, the weight of debt. As the passage opens, we are conf confronted with the scene of Jesus being nailed to the cross on, at Golgotha. Immense weight of the wooden cross symbolizes not only the physical suffering Jesus endured, but also the burden of humanity, sin, and death. It was heavy. It was difficult. And he had to be dragged up that old hill, that cross, that heavy cross. I, there, I can't remember the man's name, but I think his first name was Bob. And he's the, the, the pastor of Bourbon Street. Y'all ever heard of the pastor of Bourbon Street? He used to go up and down in, over in Bourbon Street and over in New Orleans and that with a cross. And he would carry this cross over to where to witness the people. Or he had the back of the cross. The long part of the cross was on wheels, <laughs> so it, was, it wouldn't have to carry the whole thing. But he was he witnessed to a lot of people over there <coughs> carrying that cross. Because didn't Jesus say, take up my cross daily and follow me? He did. He took him at his word. Well, we need to remember how gross that cross was. Without going into any gory details, I think of it and it brings tears to my eyes. What Jesus did for me. Amen. I just, it just amazes me. I don't understand that kind of love. I wish I did. I wish I could explain it to you all. I can't. I can't. I love you all very much. And you've heard me say this before. I couldn't send one of my sons to the cross for you. But God loves us that much. And He did. Amen. He did. All that many years ago, on that hill, called Golgotha. Remember that. Remember that when you're thinking about it. Yeah, in the midst of his agony, Jesus uttered these incredible, incredible mercy and kindness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's found in verse 24. Through it all, I think I'd have been yelling and screaming a whole lot of different things. But Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Amen. That's amazing. 
Yes, the weight of sin doesn't squeeze the compassion and grace out of Jesus. Not one little bit. Debilitating credit, a debilitating debt didn't cause Jesus to stay home uh, from his purpose. He never lost sight. All the time he was walking on this earth, pointed to that cross. He came, lived, preached, and came to die on that cross. Wow. Came to die. Wow. In that moment, we're reminded of the magnitude of our death of sin and desperate need for redemption. It is a weight we cannot manage on our own. It's just far too heavy and difficult. Far too heavy and difficult. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to die. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you. Today, we move on, on the Easter freedom we talked about last week. It's only right that we talk about the greater implications of Jesus' victory over sin and death. Uh, I, I am amazed the more you read the Word of God that He opens up your understanding so you realize just what took place. We can look at it now and it's all little Easter bunnies and all that, you know. But we have something to really celebrate on Easter. Amen. That grave, that tomb is empty. Amen. My Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God yes. making intercessory prayers for each and every one of his children. Amen. But better than that, we're called brothers and sisters now. Because we are adopted into God's family through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brother. We're now a member of God's family. Yes. Hey, get your head around that. When you feel it all, woe is me, misery and despair. Say, whoa, wait a minute. I'm a member of God's family. Amen. What's that song? I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. You're not alone. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Pardon my singing, I know it's not very good. But it's the best I got to offer. Well, the promise of redemption, it says that Jesus hangs on the cross, he is surrounded by mocking crowds and taunting soldiers. They hurl insults and challenges to him to prove his identity as the Son of God. They wanted him to put on a show is what they wanted him to do. He could have called, was it? He could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't. You know, they nailed him to the cross, but it wasn't them nails that held him there. It was Amen. love. Pure love. Pure love. In that country song, where the blood of God, <coughs> love grew. Love you. Yes. Amidst the mockery, Jesus remained steadfast in his mission of redemption. His example was a tough one to follow. I would imagine it took a lot of Jesus to say, to stay focused on the plan and purpose. I can remember reading in a, as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying. He says, nah. Lord, if it be thy will, please remove this cup from me. But then he said this, but not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Wow. There again, I, I tell you, I cannot tell you 
explain that kind of love. And then the path to freedom, number three, I think. Mean, no. Am I getting this right, Tarn? Yeah! Why is that so fuzzy? They used to ask me, yeah, I can clear it up, but I can clear that up, I guess. All right, path to freedom. Getting old. Okay. We <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry, I don't need to be reminded. I feel it every day. When I get up, if it don't hurt, it don't work. Right? Amen. Oh, that's the secret. Okay. <laughs> but looking to Jesus at these last verses of our passage, we see the contrasting response of two criminals crucified alongside him. While one criminal joins the mocking crowd and shouts and shouting insults at Jesus, the other recognizes his own sinfulness and acknowledges Jesus as the innocent Son of God. In his humility, he pleads, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. <coughs> 42. In response to the simple yet profound act of faith, Jesus offers the assurance of redemption and declares, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The encounter exemplifies the transformation of uh, redemption power and the path to freedom through genuine repentance, repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. I say repentance twice because, you know, some people, they come down front here and take my hand during the invitation and say, Pastor, I want to be saved and I want to be baptized. And then uh, we do go through that, and then Michael will take you into a side room there and show you in the Bible what it means in God's Word how to be saved. And then we'll take and baptize them, and then two months later, three months later, whatever, then you don't see them again. They're gone. Uh, they bought fire insurance. They didn't want to serve, serve a risen Savior. They just wanted to make sure they didn't have to go to hell. Uh. Well, Romans 3.23 is very says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory, glory, glory of God. And this is true. Uh, also, uh, Romans 3.24 says, And uh, all justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Amen. By Christ Jesus. We have been set free, released from the weight of death and the sting of death, by saving work of Christ's uh, death and resurrection. This is the Son that set you free, and you will be free indeed. You will be free indeed. As we come to a close, I want to thank, uh, I think for a moment, what the word freedom means. What the word freedom means. Well, I look at freedom when I think about it. It's a freedom we have of free choice, for one thing. We can choose whether we go to church or we stay home in our fuzzy pants. Or we accept the Lord or reject the Lord. That's our choice. God doesn't force you to do anything. You know, it's kind of like a husband and wife. Husbands, we don't force our wives to do the domestic engineering job they've got. You know what it's called? Domestic engineering, <laughs> being a housewife. They do that a lot. Wives, you don't force your husbands to go to work. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> but anyway, they do it out of love. This, you know, it's a team effort. And love is what the smith that holds it together. But we need to understand that kind of love. Because people have a misconception about love today. I think it relates more to lust than love. It just doesn't last very long. They say that last uh, I heard was 50% of marriages 
end in divorce. And you say, well, pastor, that's the world. No, that's the churches too. That's the churches. Why? Because they didn't understand about that agape, the agape love, the giving love. They thought it was kind of like the erotic love. And you all know what that word means. But we need to make sure we understand God is into the agape love. And that's Amen. what we need to be towards. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Now if I can get you to please stand for the invitation. If you're able, please stand for the invitation. And we're going to have a closing prayer right now. And then you're going to have an opportunity to react to this. What you've heard today. You can come forward. If you've not been saved, you can come forward and we'll show you how to be saved. If you've come here, maybe God brought you here to join this church and come and help out to the congregation here. We'll take care of that for you. Whatever it is, maybe you need prayer for one thing or another. We can do that too. We're good at praying. I know whom I have believed in, and I know he's able to keep that which I commit to him for that day. Father God, as we come to the close here now, I just ask, Father, that the Holy Spirit will have his way here this morning, that it will you know, touch hearts, Lord, and move people that need to be moved. God, for whatever reason, I just pray, Father, that you'll help us through all this to realize how much you love us and care for us. God, thank you for that. And Lord, again, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. amen.